calling to order the uh, the audit committee meeting for December the eighth. Looking around, we uh, looks like we have a quorum. Let's start with a invocation. Please bow your heads. Lord, thank you for this this cool, crisp day, and thank you for the blessings we have, including the right to assemble and govern ourselves and help us as we make decisions today that affect our neighbors and the citizens of this county. Some of these decisions are not easy, but guide us and be sure our actions are based on truth and fairness. In your name we pray. Amen. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Chairman Duncan is not with us today, but we do have a, a quorum, and I um, would like for gentlemen to um, give me an approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Second. We moved, and do we have any changes to our agenda today? No, ma'am. Thank you very much. Let's go right into, uh, let's see, our report. Um, John and Rick, come on up and tell us who you've been spying on this quarter. <laughs> There's a nervous, they nervously laugh when you come up here. Um, our, our two victims this quarter were uh, human resources and fleet services. Um, it's okay with me, but we usually have the agenda on this, the screens, and right now it's doing Something else? Okay. So starting with HR, um, you'll have uh, the HR report there in your packets. Um, I'm going to kind of skip ahead to page four where you'll see uh, a section called inquiries and observations. It's where we'll start uh, with human resources. Uh, we, we asked a lot of questions and made some observations and we were able to uh, make a recommendation in regards to um, perhaps moving towards a more paperless system, um, improving reporting capabilities and integration with the human resources, uh, record keeping and munis. A couple of uh, recommendations there and on page four below our recommendations you can see more importantly management's responses. So uh, some discussions there about moving away again from, from so much paper. They have a, a large vault full of uh, paper records uh, it may be possible to reduce that um, by going more paperless. Moving on, uh, we uh, you can see on page five, we actually reviewed personnel files. We took a look at 15 county employees haphazardly, uh, randomly selected, and five constitutional officer staff members. We examined each file uh, to see that it contained an I-9 form, a drug testing consent form, a driving cons um, record consent form, background checks. Um, and we found no issues in any of those uh, files that we uh, observed. We also looked at benefits, benefits for current employees, benefits for current contract employees, and uh, benefits for retired employees where that's applicable. For the current employees, we actually looked at the same 15 folks that we looked at uh, their personnel files and we reviewed their um, benefit enrollment forms and uh, items like that. There are some benefits extended to retirees. We also obtained a list of those retirees and looked at um, the enrollment forms and made sure that uh, all those benefits were in order and that uh, the correct amounts were being uh, charged by those um, uh, or to those, those retirees. And we also looked at contract employee benefits. We obtained a list of contract employees, selected five of those and verified that the contract was in the personnel file and that the employment contract was appropriate and uh, included the, the benefits. So we had no issues, uh, no exceptions noted, and our review of uh, benefits. Like we do in every department, we looked at purchase card transactions. Uh, we noted no exceptions with that. We also looked at purchase requisitions slash purchase orders. You see that on page eight, and no, uh, no issues there. We also reviewed timesheets in the way that we uh, always do with all departments. We noted no exceptions, but just a, just a note. Uh, the county has changed uh, banks um, this, this uh, beginning of this fiscal year. And as a result, um, that bank does not provide what we previously uh, referred to as direct deposit report. You'll see in the background and in the testing section. 
we have used those, deposits, those direct deposit reports to trace individual direct deposits for our selected employees all the way to deposit into their bank accounts. And we were not able to do that for one of the two payrolls that we selected, the, the one payroll that came after the change of banks. Uh, now, I was able to trace that individual, the individual employee's pay back to the payroll report and the, the, to, the sum total of the payroll report declaring the bank statement. But I uh, just wanted to let everyone know that the uh, procedure that we have previously agreed upon and we've been doing for several years cannot be done exactly the same way with the, the current bank records. Uh, Potter, how do you plan on going forward to test those? Questions on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a good question. So the, um, I would like to note, first of all, that we've never, to my knowledge, in all of our years, actually had an incorrect amount that was direct deposited. Um, but the way that we do these procedures, they're previously agreed upon, and uh, everyone, uh, you, you all basically know what we're going to do, and so we don't deviate without discussing it first. And so um, I'm not certain that the loss of that direct deposit report is um, necessarily significant, has a significant impact on our ability to, to get to a comfort level with um, our timesheet testing. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, I can still trace the amounts to the total report and the report to the bank. Um, so you're saying it's not that you couldn't do it, it's just that it deviates from the, basically, the plan. Basically, yes. Okay. So there, there was a higher level of detail, granular detail, in a report that we have always referred to as the direct deposit report. We've gotten in the past, and uh, with the current banking arrangement, there were just don't seem to have that same report. So not have the ability to do that. Do you know? I will check on that. If if we could get them to provide us with the same report, we can continue to do it the way we used to do. I think we can. I, I can't imagine they can't provide that. Okay, so it may be just a matter of, of a little follow up on that. But um, at the when, when doing these uh, these two departments, we were unable to do that that step. So we also looked at the workers' compensation policy. We obtained a copy of the policy uh, for the calendar year to, uh, 2020, verified that the, the policy was active and, and that everything looked appropriate with that. We did uh, a petty cash count, a, a, surprise, a surprise cash count on November 19th and noted no exceptions in the petty cash fund. Um, and then uh, the, I wasn't even aware of this, but there are certain aspects of the Federal Transit Administration compliant drug and alcohol program that have to be done in person. So there's a GDOT on-site monitoring that happens uh, annually. <clears throat> and we, ob we obtained the uh, 2020 monitoring report and noted no uh, significant issues with that. Like I said, I wasn't even aware of that. I, uh, that was, <clears throat> I didn't know there was a Georgia Department of Transportation annual report, but we took a look at it and didn't have any issues. So that's uh, uh, everything for the uh, HR department. Uh, any questions? Uh, have we looked into the update and maybe the system for maybe to get paper and all of that? Yes. Out, have we? Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah we're, we're already looking at that. And Marsha, yeah. But we're already moving in that direction, yes. We have to go back to scan. Are we scanning stuff as we now? Okay. Yeah, with the, from the things that we selected, with the current records, all, all of that was scanned and, and very easy to, to find. <clears throat> I think there were a couple of older things we requested that might have had to require going off site to go find. Um, Kitchen. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's that's a normal challenge. Uh, I think uh, HR is sort of a paperwork intensive department, being compliance oriented. Um, what is the retention for our? It's a it's a while. It, it I guess it Talking. depends on the actual record itself. Some of them I think we keep forever. Forever. Some yeah. of them are. I was wondering. Or you know they they, they cycle off, but.
somewhere back there you got Billy's first paycheck stuff. <laughs> that's, so, that's one of those. <laughs> that's, that's dust. One of those, <laughs> it's on stone. <laughs> <laughs> the papyrus. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so we can move on to the uh, fleet services. Um, one thing I, uh, I didn't get to mention when I started, I neglected to mention, this time around, um, due to some scheduling snafus, I got to go out in the field myself, which I enjoyed, and uh, I got a chance to, <coughs> uh, I always like to, to meet county employees. Uh, the county is very fortunate to have some good quality folks um, on the front lines. And so for a guy that kind of likes cars and stuff, it was fun going to fleet services. Um, and so uh, we do have the fleet services report here for you, uh, for your review. So um, first thing on page four you'll see is we looked at deposits. We, um, we obtained a general ledger detail of revenues, collected uh, a variety of deposits and traced them through the receipt of funds form where they were uh, taken to the finance department and to the valid validated deposit slip it slips. And we know there are no exceptions when working on that. We also looked at other government agencies' work orders. So this is when um, Harlem, Columbia County Community Connections, Columbia County CARES, the Department of Forestry, uh, other agencies uh, come to you know, Columbia County Fleet Services to have their uh, maintenance performed. We uh, requested a list of those work orders and tested them for several different attributes and we noted no exceptions when testing those. And by the way, some of those led to the deposits that were discussed uh, directly above there. So we, lo we looked at all sides of, of that work and found no issues there. Now when the fleet department does maintenance or repairs on Columbia County's vehicles, there is no uh, deposit associated with that, but there is a work order which is used to track the, the maintenance or the repair and to uh, charge the correct department uh, for that. So we, we looked at several of the work orders, asked a lot of questions, and really sort of delved into the work order process. We reviewed several of them. We noted no exceptions in that testing. There's multiple attributes, which you'll see in the, the report. You'll see uh, a list of attributes we tested and didn't find any issues with that. We looked at purchase requisitions. Uh, after obtaining a list of uh, purchase orders, we reviewed those. Um, and didn't uh, find any issues with that, and we looked at purchase card transactions. Now, on page seven, <coughs> you will see the purchase card transaction testing. <coughs> when we're testing purchase card transactions, we do test the purchase thresholds, uh, just like we do with purchase orders. And so there are a few instances where we made some notes. Uh, for instance, there was a, a purchase over $2,000 for a generator controller. Um, we did not see... Um, multiple quotes for that, and so we inquired about, about that. According to management, it is a, a unique situation and something of an emergency event. Um, that controller was only available from one vendor, and uh, which makes sense. And um, we recommend that that be documented in Munis uh, to avoid questions about that. There were also two invoices over $2,000 where we didn't see quotes in addition to the generator controller. Management explained that those were sole sources which uh, again appeared reasonable in the circumstances. However, it was not documented in, in Munis. And so we made the recommendation that um, there be a more consistent application of the documentation of uh, emergency pur purchases or sole source purchases, because we did see that documented in other, in other instances. And management has replied to that recommendation within the report. We also uh, took a look at timesheets, and same circumstance as with, uh, with the HR department. Uh, we've looked at two, two pay periods, one <clears throat> with the old bank where we were able to go to the direct deposit report, and one with the new bank where we were not able to do that. Uh, incidentally, it was the same payroll re report, so that, that same large dollar amount was traced to clearing the bank. We looked at the annual fleet reports, and this was a little more interesting. Um, You'll see some, uh, some, some charts in the report uh, today. Um, the annual fleet reports are maintained uh, not just for, uh, they, they come from the fuel man cars, the information comes from fuel man cars, but it's not just about fuel. Right? They maintain these fleet reports um, to keep an eye on when, um, 
Vehicles in the fleet may need to be replaced. They have a target for the number of miles they're going to put on each vehicle. So there's, there's a lot of information in these reports, but I wanted to crunch the numbers and come up with something interesting uh, to share with you. So according to those reports, over the three years that I looked at for this, uh, for today, I looked at 2017, 18, and 19, the total miles driven were over 8 million miles, which I think uh, will get you to the moon and back uh, multiple times, <clears throat> but uh, over 8 million miles each year, and on average, fuel cost is over a million dollars, 1.3 million. Um, but the cost per mile has actually been declining over time. In 2014, because we have, we have records going back for several years, we've uh, done this uh, for a few years. Uh, 2014, it was 35 cents per mile. Currently, it's closer to 17 cents per mile. So I think that's a combination of lower fuel cost and improved efficiency as newer vehicles in the fleet are more efficient. Um, so the, um, there are a couple of graphs in there to, to show you the um, decrease in the cost per mile, how it's kind of leveling out. Um, and uh, so some interesting stuff there. We also looked, that, so that, as I mentioned, comes from the fuel man cards information. We also looked at the miscellaneous fuel man cards um, uh, and trace those back to the uh, the documentation when they were requested. So, as I'm sure all of you, all of you know, the fuel man card associated with each vehicle. But in addition to that, there are circumstances like if you need to put gas in a lawnmower, for instance, the, law, the lawnmower doesn't have a fuel man card, so you have to get a miscellaneous fuel man card to to do that. And there are other circumstances when you might need to do something like that. And that that process is maintained or managed by fleet services. We selected several of those and traced them back to the documentation of the issuance of that card and didn't have any issues. So that's uh, fleet services. Any, any questions about fleet services? No, sir. Do you have any um, other recommendations for us? With the fleet services? Or on any of, on any, any any of, of them? the items on the reports? Now, all of our recommendations are included in the reports. Um, and um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I did get the opportunity to go out in the field this time and, um, and really enjoyed uh, interacting with, with, uh, with county personnel. I think the county's really lucky to have some good people working for it. So um, no, no, no recommendations beyond those we've already included in the reports for these two um, departments. And um, with that, I'll go ahead and mention to you the things that are kind of on the, on the horizon here uh, going into the next quarter. On the three-year rotation, uh, we're looking at emergency management, risk management, rental facilities, and community events. All four of those are coming around on a three-year anniversary. We are looking at uh, issuing a new lodging tax uh, report shortly. And we have one that's already almost complete, and we have selected some other hotels. Uh, we've, we um, have, didn't talk about that last quarter, but two quarters ago, we, I think we discussed that. And also, um, on the three-year rotation is the Board of Elections, which uh, I think I'm going to leave them alone a little bit longer. But uh, at some point, when things settle down, uh, they'll be due for an internal audit as well. Those are the things we're working on currently. Do you think maybe the Board of Elections will be second quarter? Or I think that would be um, break. I think they've that had would... a lot of audits lately. <laughs> yeah, they've been up. The uh, yes, I, I think probably second quarter. Um, uh, I've got I've got a schedule made up for the first quarter, and I I don't plan to be in the Board of Elections um, during that period of time. But by by June, I think we could probably have a, a Board of Elections report that would. Um, it covers some of the, the this period of time, and uh, so yes. But I, I don't plan to uh, be in the board of elections any time between now and the runoff, and hopefully the runoff won't lead to a recount. And amen. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. That was that was the for internal audit. Yes. And fiscal year 2019-20 audit results summary. How that? External. Oh, the external audit. Uh, the other. 
other CPA, sorry. Thank you, John. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Uh, hey, good morning. Um, speaking of paperless, I had my backup presentation here, so thank you for like, giving me um, the opportunity to see the presentation. Um, I am Bonnie Cox, and I do serve as your external audit partner um, with Cherry Beckert, and today we are going to talk about the results of the fiscal year ended 2020, June 30, 2020, um, for those financial statement audit results. Go ahead and flip to the next one. So this slide is just a, a reminder of what is management's responsibility here at the county when it comes to the financial statements and the audit. So the accounting policies that are sound and appropriate um, for the county, <coughs> the internal controls um, that surround those financial reportings, um, that, these are all management's responsibilities to, to, to make sure those financial statements are fairly presented in accordance with GAAP, which is generally accepted accounting principles. That is the responsibility of your management. Um, if your management were aware of any known internal control deficiencies or any known fraud, it would be management's responsibilities to bring that up to our attention as the auditor. So the auditor's responsibility um, is for us to plan and execute on audit, on the audit procedures, to ensure that those uh, the reasonable assurance, not absolute, we talk about this, we don't test 100% of, of transactions, um, but that those financial statements are free of material misstatement. The auditor responsibility is also to express an opinion on those financial statements, to, to state that. Um, and then our responsibility is also to communicate with you, the body of governance, the audit committee, um, those significant items that were noted during the course of our audit. And so that's what we're doing today. This slide here, you will see bulleted um, points of required communications as a part of those audit results. Um, if you were to look in note one of your financial statements, then you would see the explanation of your significant accounting policies. You would also see that they are the same as last year. There were no new accounting standards that had to be implemented. <laughs> I'm sure Liam was grateful for that um, circumstance in this fiscal year. No new required standards to be. So everything's the same compared to the prior year. Significant accounting estimates, I'm required to bring those to your attention just because we design our audit procedures differently um, for testing those. You heard a lot about testing receipts and transactions and invoices. Estimates are just different because they require judgment on management's part. And so you can see here the list of those significant accounting estimates, the allowance for doubtful accounts, what receivables may or may not be collected across the entire county. Um, how long your capital assets will be useful, so how many years you're carrying that depreciation on those capital assets, that's a judgment of your management. The landfill post-closure cost, that also requires um, estimate of management. Your investments are carried at fair value, and fair value is also an estimate um, of those amounts that are recorded. And then your post-employment benefits liabilities, you are well aware the county does not have pension plan, but you do have what's called the OPEB plan, those post-employment <laughs> benefits, liabilities um, that flow into the line items, deferred inflows and outflows. So those are the significant estimates that are in your financial statements. So this slide here, what you will see, you will see a lot of green check marks and a lot of the word no, but in external financial results, those are positive things. Um, so there were not any unusual transactions or difficult to, to audit transactions for which there was not appropriate guidance. Um, we did not have any difficulties encountering the audit, even though Leanne tried to create this little knee issue right here at the end. Um, we still were able to get here on the, the timeline. She did a great job helping us still get um, here as planned. We did not have any disagreements. If we had disagreements with your management during the course of the audit about any accounting treatment or audit treatment, then we would bring that to your attention. Um, to our um, knowledge, your management is not consulting with other independent accountants. You just heard from your internal auditor, but by definition in a government, internal audit is a management function, so they are not independent. Um, but if we were aware that your management were talking to other independent auditors, um, I would bring that to your attention. Um, and there were no audit adjustments. <laughs> Everything was expected, and no findings, and, and nothing there. So. Um, there were not any issues which your management talked with us prior to retaining us. They did not say, well, if we were to do this, what would your audit opinion be? If that were the case, I would bring that to your attention. Um, all the proposed adjustments were just in the, the normal course of the year and close. Your management does all of those. They give us all the information for that, um, for the year and close, and all those have been reflected in the records of the county. 
Uh, Cherry Beckert has remained independent, as auditors um, must do, and your management is going to give to us a written, signed representation letter that tells us that they were truthful in all of our inquiries and did not withhold any information that would have been rele relevant either to our audit procedures or to the financial statements either way. So at the end of the day, what do you get? Um, so we are anticipate issuing an unmodified report on the financial statements there. Um, we also will issue a clean report on compliance with laws and regulations under government auditing standards, which um, if internal controls related to financial reporting in regards to laws and regulations there. And then we also will again this year issue um, a clean opinion on uniform grant guidance. If you recall, some years you have spent more federal funds that require this additional compliance audit. Past couple of years it's been some DOT funds. Um, this year it was the Corona Virus Relief Fund, which we'll talk about that in just a second, but that also um, will get a report this year. And then these required communications. You'll get a letter that I signed that will basically detail out in a lot of words these things that we're talking about today. Um, in addition, these are the countywide um, statements. In addition, we also, um, for you, there is a landfill report that's separate specific to the landfill. There's a library report that's specific and required for the library. Um, the Board of Health gets a standalone report, and those all have been, um, I guess last year was the first year for the library, but, um, but in previous years we've issued those other. And this year, the Development Authority also will have a separate standalone report because of the business needs of the Development Authority there. Um, all right, I mentioned your expenditures of federal awards. Uh, the Coronavirus Relief Fund is the fund that we tested this year. Um, I will say that um, the... The, the legislature did not do accounting people any favors in the dates in which they passed certain things. Um, and so we did have to walk down an exercise of when it was appropriate to recognize the revenue from those grant funds. And I will just say that the, the Carl Vincent Institute of Governments, which is out of the University of Georgia, while it is not authoritative guidance like GASB, they did issue some clarifying guidance of how to inter interpret what the state of Georgia did and how that applies to GASB. That did give us some, some logical um, revenue recognition um, that your management followed there, so that um, is, was impacted this year. And then again, no compliance findings at all. We did have, you just heard a human resources internal audit report. We did have one recommendation to your human resources department that just relates to the dates when county employees transfer departments, that if you would align that with payroll dates and only transfer at the cutoff dates of the payroll periods, it would um, decrease any, any potential problem of having to void some checks and, and do that sort of thing. So just seemed a, a logical recommendation there just to align any of those transfers with the payroll cutoff dates to, to make things a little bit simpler on the internal controls there. And let me just add there that, that that is our normal procedure. We had an isolated instance, I believe it was one. one. It was one. We, 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 we only test a handful, and so the way we find those needles in the haystack, I'm not sure, but... Um, <laughs> it's amazing. That one. <laughs> but that is the typical... That typically, we, we do it that way. That, that's, that's our goal. But we found the, the one voided check this year. That I'm glad. <laughs> glad you found it. Yes. Um, okay, COVID-19. Um, so the impact to the audit, I will just tell you, um, you know, Cherry Becker, we're a national firm, and on March 16th, our firm took 1,200 employees and went 100% remote in a 24-hour period. And um, we did that out of safeguarding the health of our employees and of our clients. Um, I will say that our firm headquarters are in Richmond, Virginia, and our CEO's office is in Raleigh, North Carolina. And so as we have returned to our workplace and transformed our workplace um, as a firm, we have followed some of the we kind of go to the lowest common denominator, right? So we have followed a very conservative approach of safeguarding our people and our clients. And so right now what um, our teams are doing, we still, if our employees would like to go to office or go to the client locations, we certainly um, allow them to do that at their comfort level. The reason I bring this up is because it impacts your management, um, and I just am very grateful for how flexible they were with allowing our people to conduct our audit testing um, either combining being on site, but also doing that remotely. And so very grateful for how your management helped us to do that. And we're still here on time, which that is also um, a significant accomplishment of them working with us to get through that. For the actual audit testing, we did um, test the, I mentioned the Corona Relief Fund, which was new to this year. And in the reporting, 
um, your finance team had to add a, a non-major special revenue fund to track those expenditures and that revenue. And so if you pay attention to <laughs> page and whatever in the, in the report, you would see a new fund there that'll be um, that'll show up that'll have the activity there, and we'll probably it'll still have carryover into 21 um, as well. Next year, <laughs> um, so the lease standard we've talked about this for a long time. I will say that GASB um, and FASB, both on the commercial side and on the government side, because of the COVID pandemic, they did delay implementation for some standards. Um, to fiscal 22, but again, that's a beginning of the year impact that's going to have a significant impact there. Leanne and her team are already looking at it. This is something that we've recommended to, to explore um, software purchases that are going to be required to implement this standard in regards to the lease calculations. Very similar if you think about your depreciation calculations of your capital assets, um, which you have to have a software to track and, and calculate that depreciation. Very similar for your leases as that standard um, becomes required to be implemented in 22, in the fiscal 22, but it'll have to be fiscal 21 to gather all that information so that to be ready for that 22 implementation. I'll pause and ask if any of you have any questions. I think you pretty much covered it. Okay. <laughs> a lot. And you it quick. Very good. Very good. Um, you have my email and my phone number there. Um, I, you know, this is the formal communication of the audit results, but I also work with your management, but you guys are my clients. So if you ever have any questions or concerns, then please reach out. I'd be happy to talk. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, that was a lot of information we just got mm -hmm. from several different sources. What, um, do we have any comments? All right. Having none, and I have no nothing for executive session for this committee. Um, Mr. Johnson, anything to add? Any no, any public comment? All right, being none, we will adjourn this meeting and come back in two minutes for the um, Management and Internal Services Committee. <coughs>
Right. Calling to order the uh, Management and Internal Services Committee meeting for December 8th. Um, we have already prayed and pledged. We have a quorum here, missing one, but we have two. Um, need approval for the minutes of the previous meeting. Make a motion to approve. So moved. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Not to my knowledge, Madam Chair. Agenda is approved, and we'll move on down. I don't have any presentations or um, any items for the consent agenda. I'll move directly into debate. New business. Mr. Johnson, do you have items for us? Thank you, ma'am. The first item you have for your consideration is a service agreement with child enrichment. Uh, this is a total of $2,000 uh, from the Commissioner of Discretionary Funds, and staff recommends approval of the service agreement. Moved consent. So moved. Mr. Kennedy? Uh, the next item will be presented by Mr. Granado. <clears throat> Madam Chair, how is everyone? Good. Okay, so this is for the uh, um, bid 2020-037, bid 1313 for the portable generators. You may recall this is part of the overall grant that we're getting from FEMA for Hurricane Irma. Uh, yeah, Hurricane Irma. Um, we put this to bid on November 19th, 2020. Seven bids came in. The lowest two um, did not meet the standard um, minimum specifications. Um, the evaluation you have is attached. The lowest bidder meeting specifications was JNT Service Center Incorporated in the amount of $523,260. Our local share uh, of that is going to be $78,489. Um, staff recommends the Board of Commissioners award um, bid 1313 um, Portable Generator JNT Services Center Incorporated in the amount of $523,260. Again, our local share for this project is $78,489. Moved to consent. So moved. Anything else? No, ma'am. Thank right. you. And technology services, you're not Michael Blanchard. <laughs> Tell us what you have. Are you going to spend money like Michael does? Moved. <laughs> okay, let's, let's hear it. What you got? What you got this morning? Okay. Um, my name is Sean McArdle. I'm the IT manager. Um, I'm presenting this for Mr. Blanchard. Um, in uh, October of 2017, the county uh, renewed our agreement with Vision Technology Solutions for the county website and the services that, uh, that we uh, utilize with them. Five months later, in February of 2018, uh, Vision was acquired by Granic Granicus Solutions. Uh, so uh, we have continued our agreement with them over the last couple of years. When our renewal uh, came available this summer, Granick has asked us to update the agreement to reflect their name instead of Vision, since Vision was no longer the, the, uh, our vendor of support. So, um, so what we are doing is presenting this, asking that uh, this, cons uh, excuse me, this assumption agreement that uh, we can get this updated until the end of the contract, which uh, ends in 2022, at the end of the fifth year. Uh, the, the annual cost this year is $22,822, and as with most of our support agreements, it uh, increases by about 5% each year. What specifically does this technology do for our website? Uh, our website is hosted with Granicus in their cloud data center, uh, and it also, we use their, um, their uh, content management solution, which allows our users to update the web page without having to have any formal <coughs> website programming type of experience. Move to consent. So moved. Do you have anything else for us today, Sean? No, ma'am. Apparently. Uh, this was a cheat day. All right. Um, do we have anything else, Mr. Johnson, under? I don't believe so. No. Do we have any legal matters? Um, all right. Let's move right into staff reports. The first staff report. Your information is our personnel savings year to date. Uh, you can see that we've already saved significant money, the total being $499,592. And uh, we continue to uh, struggle filling positions, but um, we're on our way. Accepted this information, year to date budget report. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> you like Elvis. First report I have for you is the year-to-date budget report. Um, this month ended November 30th. We should be operating around 42%. As is customary, I have listed several of the major funds on the rec sheet. Operating. Okay. Thank you. 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 
and this FOST update? FOST update, we have collected money in the month of October. That check was one of our largest checks to date, almost $200,000. Classes we moved into. Uh, and the annual percentage increase now is at 22 Excellent news. Much in your investment report. Yes, the final report is the investment report for your um, and I'm going to use my injury as an excuse along with the audit. I've not had time to compile earnings information. I will tell you, I'm probably just going to have to do that in summary format. We can't get it by investment here. But I will. I want you to be aware, just like Ms. Cox had program or in her presentation, that a lot of these are fair value estimates change uh, just market so I will show you what has been treated as well as any negative and that will fluctuate from year to year a lot of these investments long term five years or so but um, I will try to get that for you on the um, for example the first section uh, under general fund LPL there's a couple that the maturity date has passed. Is, did they automatically roll I noticed roll that. Over, we just need or? to update it. Okay. If, if they do um, mature, they go into that money market number you'll see a lot of times at the bottom, and they automatically roll in there. And, and right now, I have not been reinvesting in it. So I'm not going to lock in five-year rate at 5%. Exactly. So... Um, watching that very good very good You've got some great rates on here and um fantastic job covid no oh, but <laughs> those are those are very very good very good do you have any questions or comments on any of these reports having none we will accept all of these as information do we have any um other comment public comment participation for this committee being none uh yes we have one item Johnson, would you like to talk about that? Uh, you can just move it straight to executive session for the full right. board if you'd like. It's just the contract for, um, it's, the, it's the COLA increases for the contract employees. Oh, oh yes. Let's um, uh, move to move to full board. So moved. All right. Any other items for this committee? Seeing none, we will adjourn and come back in. Or keep well, rolling. Good, All right. Gary. Order the Public Works and Engineering Services Committee for December 8th. Invocation and pledge form. If I could, can I? Question to accept the uh, uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Okay, Mr. Jones. Yeah, one item, Mr. Chairman, just bring it to your attention. Uh, on the agenda itself, you are not showing an I-1C7, although there is an I-1C7 item. So just make that adjustment to the agenda. That item is uh, bid number 2020036, bid 3313 for Floor Wells Road. Again, it's, it's in your packet. It's just not showing on the actual agenda, I don't believe, on the software. It's on our paper, not showing it's on mine. But on the printed one, it is. Right. Correct. Okay. Nothing no right into business. Lottery, you have any? I do. Thank you, sir. The city of Harlem has reached out to us concerning an easement across some county property. 
Uh, they're looking to run a sewer line to connect a subdivision to their sewer system. To do so, they need to cross county property. It's right along a power line easement as well. Uh, we have looked at it. Staff's recommend approval of that easement. It. Clayton, up. Oh. I get started. Get close. I wasn't pushing it hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual for me. Usually I push pretty hard. <laughs> Half of your consideration, the first item is a uh, engineering proposal from Turnip Seed uh, for our uh, campus at the uh, Water Utility Service Center. This item having our general operating budget proposal is for a lump sum of 32,000 we think it's going to be right at around 500,000 to get this because it's not just a matter of overlaying there's we got to dig up and firm up the base because it's not doing well we would recommend that engineering proposal that item out for bid I'm sorry, motion to. So moved. <clears throat> Believe it or not, I was here in December of <laughs> 1980, but they didn't ask my opinion about this uh, uh, water, wholesale water agreement with Artem at that time. I was here. It was a 40 year agreement. I saw that and I said, well, I won't be here when that thing expired, but <laughs> 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 look at where I sit. <laughs> It actually expires this month, but I don't think we've come. I know there's been negotiations for a renewal of that agreement. Uh, a resolution has not been breached, and so we would recommend a three month that agreement. Both parties a chance. Uh, just to let you know that I am meeting with their consultant, who's also serving as their interim manager today at 11:30. If we uh, I'm going to meet with him today, and, and they're already talking about resolution, but I agree with uh, Mr. Clayton's um, recommendation here just to extend this for three months. I believe we can work out the terms in three months. Consent agenda, or does it have to go to the uh, It could go to the consent agenda. Consent. So moved. I think it was back in August we entered into an agreement with Blue Water sewer relocation on the Kelly sewer line. Uh, and as we got out there and started boots on the ground and looking at it real hard, come to a realization that if we did that only that 1,000 feet, <laughs> am I still here? Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> that we might be Bright wasting lies, some money. Uh, <laughs> and we would need the 2,000 feet to make that thing is and we've gotten it out of the way of the erosion of the creek that's in there. Call for many, many years. Asked for a uh, proposal from Blue Water, and they gave us one for an additional $14,750. That would bring a total of their income up to $46,750. We had $500,000 budgeted for this. Recommending that budget up to seven. dollars Motion to consent. So moved. <clears throat> First of November, we took bids uh, for the painting of our pipe galleries at our water treatment plants, both our Blanchard plant and our Clark Hill plant. And I don't know if y'all have seen those galleries. They are complex. Uh, a lot of pipes and bolts and valves in those galleries, and of course, those bolts are starting to 
decay somewhat. So it's time to get a good paint job on those. Uh, the low bid for the painting part of that contract was Mansfield Industries out of Augusta. Uh, they were the only bidder at $855,902. I talked to the engineers about it, and they felt very comfortable both with the bidder and with the company. So we that bid. On the second bid uh, it was for the replacement of doors and windows and tiles and bathroom fixtures to kind of upgrade at both plants. I have to go back in and then and do these kind of things. The little bit we got on that, and I think we had like three bidders on that, was uh, Jar Walden out of Augusta for a low bid of $429,115. Total for both of these plans, $1,285,070. We actually budgeted $1,750,000. Motion to consent. So moved. Money today. <laughs> I saved you enough. Is that, is that how we're... <laughs> you did. Thank you. Now for your consideration, uh, either one of these sections. Uh, the first one is from September. We would recommend in September. And so move. Second one is from Burton Carla Mall, and we would recommend the acceptance of that. Motion to consent. So moved. Next one is Dowski. Y'all didn't think I was going to get that one, did you? <clears throat> and we would recommend acceptance of that. Motion to consent. Next one is from James Carey Jr. Recommend acceptance of that. Motion to consent. My last one is from a gentleman, Larry Prather. I've heard that name before somewhere. Oh, he was a commissioner when I started here with Colonial. Signed off on that one. <laughs> Water that work. He did, yeah. as a matter of fact. <clears throat> uh, for a, uh, is uh, giving us an encroachment agreement, uh, and we would recommend acceptance of that encroachment agreement. Motion to consent. Mr. Tice, I believe you're up. Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, the first item we have for your consideration is a bid for the Columbia County Wayfinding and Signage System Phase 1. A bids were recently opened. Uh, phase 1 includes wayfinding and signage upgrades throughout the county. Appling, Evans, Martinez, uh, Evans, uh, the lowest, most responsive bidder was Environmental Graphics Group in the amount of $298,200. Staff recommends approval to enter into contract with Environmental Graphics Group for phase one of the project. Uh, Finally. Um, forward. <laughs> I was, I've been working on this since I was on the CDB. It seems like forever ago, but it's been several years in the making. Very excited to see this. Finally coming to fruition. Motion. A little better deal than you thought it was going to be. Yeah. This is phase one. Just <laughs> all part. So moved. The uh, next item we have is for the acceptance of improvements for Crawford Creek Section 8 and Smith Oaks Section 1. Uh, said improvements for Crawford Creek Section 8 include uh, road, storm, water, sanitary sewer system improvements along with the rights of way and easement. Uh, said improvements for Smith Oaks Section 1 include the road, storm, along with rights of way and easements associated with these improvements. Staff recommends acceptance of improvements contingent upon staff's approval of the final plat as built and warranty deed with a two year warranty period from the date of written acceptance of the as built drawings. Is there anything unusual or controversial about these items? No, ma'am. Motion to consent. The next item we have is for the acceptance of right of way from Riverwood Plantation Homeowners Association. For the 48 foot uh, right, of, right away for Cavanaugh Lane. It's a small uh, roadway in Riverwood that uh, the, the county currently does not uh, oversee the right of way. So we have uh, had staff go out and inspect this. Uh, the, this right of way will include the road along with the rights of way and easements 
Associated with these improvements, uh, staff recommends acceptance of the right of way, Capital Lane. Motion to consent. Next, we have the acceptance of improvements for Whispering Pines, Section 4A. Uh, improvements include the road, stormwater, and sanitary sewer system systems, along with the rights of way easement. Associated with these improvements, uh, staff recommends acceptance of improvements contingent upon staff's approval of the final plat as built and warranty deed with a two-year warranty period from the date of written acceptance. Drawings. Motion to consent. So move. The next item we have for you is the 2021 LMIG or Local Maintenance Improvement Grant application. Uh, the application is due February 1st, 2021, uh, based on state formula. Uh, our allocation will be one uh, a little over 1.5 million as shown on your agenda item. There's also a 10% match required. Um, staff has compiled a, a priority list. Uh, this is not all the the, the, the roads on the list that need to be improved, but this um, is greater than the allocation and the 10% match. Um, all of these will be for resurfacing and rehab. Uh, staff recommends the Board of Commissioners approve the list presented and authorize the Chairman of the Board to execute all the documents necessary for the grant. The LMIG is GDOT funds. They just tell us, here's about how much you're going to have. And we submit a list. Correct. That's correct. That's correct. Percentage of road mileage. So it's, it's based on a LARC formula, based on centerline road miles, population is divvied out to every county of the municipality. Again, like Mr. Titus stated, we have $1.5 million and we have to match 10%. So another $150,000 we have to put on top of it. So this is just an application to get that $1.5 million. They do ask what roads we're going to spend that money on. So we're going to show them these roads. We have a lot more roads we're going to do, but we'll bring that to you as a separate item next year to approve the actual paving of many, many roads. That are already funded in another funding source. So when will the check come to us? I would say probably 30 to 60 days after the chairman signs the application. Consent? Can we do it to consent? Motion to consent. So move. Okay, next we have pro proposed safety lighting for Uchi Creek Greenway at Canterbury Farms Crosswalk. We had a resident concerned about some safety issues at this crosswalk. We had staff uh, look into it and uh, believe a safety light is warranted here. Um, this will improve the safety at the, the crosswalk, the Uchi Creek Greenway Crosswalk at Canterbury Farms. Uh, we reached out to Georgia Power. The upfront pole cost would be $2,000. The annual cost of $391.20. Staff recommends approval for the power to install a safety light on the new pole and build the county accordingly. Safety light, I mean, there's a light bulb on a pole, or is this chain, it's a flashing light? The light on a pole, street light. Motion to consent. So move. Okay, the last item we have is for the bid on Flowing Wells Road Widening Phase 2 uh, with Beams Contracting. Bids were re recently received uh, for the Flowing Wells Road Widening Phase 2 uh, and were open December 3rd. Uh, Beams Contracting uh, was the most responsive, was the lowest most responsive bidder, we believe, at $8,641,596.58. We are still reviewing the bids, tabulating uh, the bids, making sure all the bonds are in place. Uh, staff recommends moving this item to the debate agenda at full commission uh, to allow staff time to complete our review and verify bids, bonds, et cetera. Motion to debate. Move that on to debate then. Staff report. Yes, Mr. Chairman, as it's uh, running around 41, 42, our expenditure. Running about what it's supposed to be. Okay, with it. 
our budget. Clayton, are people, um, do you have a lot of residents who are behind on their water bill due to COVID or on me we, or anything? We have the same one, and <laughs> COVID, non-COVID. They don't pay until you show whatever reason. Most of them we know by name. So there's not a big COVID-related swell of folks behind. That's good. And, of course, <coughs> Have your uh, construction project report active in the last month. The work performed right behind me. Commissioner or public comment? One executive session item, and uh, Mr. Clayton, I'd love for you to handle the me instead of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Uh, That's oh, you, executive session. You, I can't you, say you, had a, you had a trick on this one, didn't you? Uh, um, let's move this one to full. full. Thank you very much. As long as it's spelled correctly. <laughs> right. We will adjourn at nine thirty two. Yeah. All right. Oh.
Good morning, everyone. We'll call this meeting of the uh, Community Emergency Services Committee uh, to order at 9.37. Uh, we dispense with uh, all the order and vacation pledge. Uh, Mr. Allen and I are here. Mr. Allen and I, this, this must be the last Tuesday morning you have to endure us all. Right? It's your last Tuesday morning? It is. This is my last committee. Well, I'll add my thanks to you. You've always been a man to emulate. Uh, are any uh, additions to the agenda? Not on all, Mr. Chairman. Stands there aren't any presentations? No, sir. There being none, uh, looks like we're going right into the debate agenda. And unfinished business, I think, Mr. Luton, you're up. <clears throat> yes, sir, thank you. First item for your consideration is a tabled item uh, from last month for the agreement with the Wooden Partners to develop a five to 10 year master plan for parks, recreation, and events. Um, again, just the highlights, this is a, a 10 year roadmap for us to assess where we are, where we're going, and how to get there. Uh, through, it uses extensive community involvement, needs assessment survey, financial analysis, level of service standards, and a strategic action plan. So staff is asking for um, recommending approval of this contract, uh, uh, phase one of the contract, which includes tasks one through three in the amount of $80,000. Uh, the full amount of the contract is two hundred and. Eight thousand, but we're just, we're asking for the uh, phase one approval today of of eighty thousand dollars. Questions about that? Uh, so for today, approval of phase one, and the remainder going to debate that, agenda. Is that right, Mr. Johnson? That is correct. The way the contract is written, it expires in June. Those tasks one through three take us up till June. So we would ask for the uh, next amount to cover phases two and three in the next budget year. All right. Uh, so if phase we'll have one. a sample and a, and a plan in the first, in the first, after these first installment. For further understanding and discussion, I'd like to move this to debate. So moved. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, if, if I could just interject, and I, and I appreciate that, and we're, I think we're good there. Do you mind going back and revisiting the, the top of the agenda to get the approval of the minutes from the previous meeting? I believe oh. we might have skipped past Oh, that. my error. Forgive me. Uh, looking at the uh, the minutes from previous meeting, Mr. Allen? Yes, I, I make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. All right, so moved. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, few items uh, relate to the Performing Arts Center. I'm going to ask Mr. Jameson to step up in case you have any questions after I present them. The, the first item is the facility use agreement for the venue. Uh, as you can see in the attached, staff, staff recommends approval of the facility use agreement. Any questions, sir? None. I, I didn't know if you were going to give me a but that's fine. No, I have no questions, actually. <laughs> I understand it. Uh, we're basically, uh, we've, we've reviewed similar Venues and facilities around the state. We have, yeah, around both, the country, the region, yeah, yeah, both regionally, locally, um, and on a state level, mm -hmm. um, and some on a, on a more national level as well. Um, this would be a standard agreement uh, to start getting shows booked and in the facility. Fantastic. Good consent. All right, so moved. Move to consent. Thank you. Next item is is for the venue management software called Ungerbach. See the long list of of um, services that it includes there. It is a, a specialized software for venues of this type. Staff recommends contracting with Ungerbach software in the amount of $26,000 upfront cost and then $14,500 annual uh, cost uh, for subsequent years, pending final review of the agreement from the county attorney. What is the note here that this item was pulled during approval of the agenda? That previous, it brought, okay, so it was brought for, okay, I just was wondering what that was. Um, it's just, again, it's a unique CRM specifically for this kind of, of operation. I think I was in a meeting where you briefly went through that a little bit about how it tracks people that buy for events and you can 
Right, right. This is actually for the booking side of it. So this okay. is how we will track the people that rent the facility, um, whether it's a show, a banquet, you name it. Um, this is where we will track that. This, this program also, the, one of the primary purposes is it houses the master calendar for the facility. So we can look at all the individual areas in the building. We can look at their usage. We can look at number of hours that they're being used, um, number of days they're being used, revenue against those spaces, um, so that we can start to gain all of that information and knowledge about what are those primary spaces. Um, we will also use this to, uh, the, the contract um, or, or the license agreement will be loaded into this program. We'll use this program to send out quotes um, for booking the facility when people are interested in those and putting together the agreements. Um, it'll house all of the information, you know, if, if they need additional tables and chairs or all of that information that we need to run the events themselves, this program uh, does that. Does, does the Ingerbach work with, in any way, overlap? I understand it's its own standalone. Does it, does it in any way overlap with any existing databases we have in our, our department or is it completely by itself for this nope. role? It is by itself, but it, <clears throat> but let me caveat that it, what, what's more important is that, that, that it has the ability to interface eventually, which I think it will. Um, but this is a, for, for what he's trying to do, it's very, very specialized. And as such, this is very specialized software. But having said that, um, the cost that it comes in at is yeah. very reasonable yes, for it is software that is this specialized. So I think the, the important thing down the road is, is looking at the integration of the ticketing system. Beyond that, I think you'll, I, I don't think there's an outstanding requirement for it to integrate with anything else. Right. That was, that was actually the main thing I was, I was, when I had originally asked about this, whether this was going to be a ticketing system as well. But as long as it, we're looking down the road at, at Correct. Okay. I was just curious. Thank you. Uh, that being the understanding, I'll move to consent. And so moved, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, next item is resolution number 2044, the fee schedule, establishing a fee schedule for the uh, Performing Arts Center and authorizing the general manager uh, uh, to negotiate on behalf of Columbia County uh, rental fees. Uh, staff recommends approval. Consent. We're asking this to go to debate. Oh, this has to go, yeah, it's a fee schedule. Sorry. Does we're actually moved to debate. <laughs> All right, moved to debate. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Final item is uh, acceptance of the uh, resurfacing bid for the Evans Sound Center Park playground. Uh, if you remember, a, a couple months ago, we rejected the bid. We had one single uh, bidder come in, so we uh, tweaked a couple of things and sent it back out. We got three bidders this time. And ultimately, the lowest came in about ten, eleven, ten or eleven thousand dollars lower than the the first bid. So, uh, the surface out at Evans Sound Center Park takes a pounding, as you can imagine. It's in pretty rough shape. Uh, probably going on about ten years old. Uh, a lot of loose rubber particles going everywhere. This would give us a much more durable, longer lasting, higher end surface. And I. I I think it's much needed out there. Staff would recommend approval. Uh, utilizing 11, uh, excuse me, $84,000 of park, 11 to 16 park upgrade funds and $71,518.15 out of 11 to 16 recreation discretionary funds. For a total of 1,000, or $155,518. Fifty cents. Yes. Please continue. Yeah, so moves. Appreciate you uh, seeking the lower bid. And thank you, sir. Um, have no additional items, sir. Mr. Driver. <laughs> thank you, sir. No, no legal matters before us. We have uh, staff reports. Uh, Chief, do you have anything? Or? I have my usual uh, response and budget reports for your information. Questions, sir? Do we have any commissioner uh, comments or participation? And nothing for executive session? 
There being none, we'll adjourn this meeting at 9.47 a.m. Let's Thank round you. it off to three minutes at 9.50. That was much better than what I was doing. Stretch their legs. <laughs>
Thoughts, sir? Yes. Move to consent, sir. Second. Second item up for your consideration is the re-roofing of the Columbia County Detention Center. Um, we have uh, <clears throat> walked that roof many times. There are the old jail, the new jail, some newer pods, all of which have different roofing systems, uh, different heights, uh, different ages of these roofs. Um, the sheriff has noted that uh, ongoing leaks at his facility, so we've come in and done an analysis. Um, we are asking to award the re-roofing of this campus to SRS out of Griffin, Georgia in the amount of $1,116,000. Project should be complete within 90 days, um, and this will provide him a new high-quality PVC roof with fiber um, that has a, a good warranty and I think will, will last him a good time. This, this was originally in the, this was planned for, this was in our budget discussions with the sheriff. Is this what we were expecting or? It's actually, let's more, I, let, let, let Matt have that. We, we've been back and forth with this a lot and been trying to figure out a way to fund this, but go ahead, Matt. So we, uh, the sheriff did come in with his request during last budget year as part of his general budget and we were able to find some uh, unallocated interest money, some small money. We had budgeted a million dollars for that. Um, the first bid came in, I think, 1.5 million. Mr. Prather did a really good job of, of rethinking this. I think Mr. Scarberry worked with them. They came up with a new idea, and they got the cost down by $400,000. We are asking to throw an additional $116,000 of unallocated interest at this project to uh, get this done. Okay. It looked like an adequate bid process. Uh, is there, given the amount, is, uh, is there any problem with sending this uh, to debate? Yes, sir. Just given the amount so everybody can have have a look at it. Certainly, it certainly needs to be done. I don't, I don't dispute. I've personally worked with SRS in past projects and move to full body. Move. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brother. Um, and on down to development. All right, the first item we have is alcohol beverage license of cattle walters, uh, LTD. And this is a change of ownership. Uh, the, new app, the new owner has applied for an alcohol beverage license to sell beer, wine, and distilled spirits for on-premise consumption at 106 A. Davis Road. They have uh, provided all the information and have uh, posted the property. Staff recommends approval of the licensing effective January 1, 2021. I don't realize they changed ownership. Move to consent. I didn't know they were still open. Second. <laughs> okay. Um, Anything else uh, regarding business? Got it? None? Uh, legal matters. But you're so festive today. I just figured you were, you were dressed up for a reason. <coughs> All right, seeing none. Staff reports, development services. All right, the first one we have is the November 2019 2020 report. A copy of that is attached for your information. No further action is required. Answer any questions? are surpassing last year in all categories now. Or and any more oh, no. coming next month or this month as well. All right, the next one we have is the uh, November 2020 Development Financial Report. A copy of that is attached for your information and no further action is required. And the Thank last you. one we have is the temporary alcohol uh, permits for November 2020. Copy of that is also attached. Ready, sir? Take that for information. Questions? No, sir. All right. Commissioner, public comments? Anything from the commissioner? Anything from the public? Being none, uh, we have no executive session. So at 9.56, I will adjourn my final committee meeting. Thank you. And adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir.